The way we finished up the year last year was really strong as far as uh, accuracy on um, on my uh, combined wave counts and her cycle analysis on the U.S. stock market indices. Um, really had a very strong second half of the year. Looking forward to continued accuracy like that. Knocking on wood now uh, here in uh, the new year. On the long-term chart on Dow Jones Industrial Average, um, now that we've crossed over to the new year, we have a few new subscribers and I want to make sure they're aware of three major uh, Fibonacci targets that I've had on the charts for a long time on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. The first one is at 41,020. That is where one wave five in teal. So this is cycle degree. Teal is cycle degree on my charts. Um, so up from the 1932 low, one in teal, two, three in 1966, four in 1974. And, um, and obviously we've been getting a massively extended fifth wave up from 1974 low. So we're still in a five wave impulse up to the upside that started in 1932. But um, we're very, very close now, getting closer. Probably we'll hit this target this year in 2022 to a, a extended wave five target. And that's where wave five and teal would be equal to the net traveled of one through three teal times 1.618. So that is a, a massive, massively extended wave five target. So you would take the distance from here to here, take that times 1.618 and add that to the bottom of the 1974 loan, we get that target at 41,020. Then if we start in 1974, we'll, we'll move to the next uh, degree target. This would be primary or burgundy on my charts, primary degree target up from the 1974 low, one, two, three in burgundy, four in burgundy to, down through the 2009 low. And a normal, the very most normal uh, target for the end of a fifth wave in Elliott wave is where wave five, in this case, Burgundy is equal to the net traveled of one through three times 0.618. And that target is at 41,981. So, you know, considering that we're looking back almost a hundred years here, that that target is amazingly close to this one, both in the 41,000s area. Uh, this would really closer to 42,000, but that would be um, the most uh, common target for a normal fifth wave. Now we would expect a normal fifth wave here because we've already seen an extended wave. Uh, so in Elliott wave, one of, of the odd numbered waves at an impulse is typically extended. And in the stock market, it's usually the third wave. And so if this is wave one and two, wave three topped in uh, the year 2000 at a really extended uh, 4.236 times, uh, a 4.236 expansion off the top of wave one. So you, you measure this, take it times 4.236 and add that to the top of wave one. You get this target that was just very accurate on this very long-term chart. The price fell just ever so short of hitting it. Very slight miss there, not by much. And then uh, an expanded flat for wave four. So we would simply look for wave five to be equal to the, the distance from the start of the fifth, fifth wave up in teal. So one, two, three. So do you take this distance from here to here, take it times 0.618 and add that to the bottom of wave four, the 2009 low, and you get this target, 41,981. And then, um, so now we have a one, two, three, four in, in teal, and then 
inside this extended fifth wave, one in Burgundy, two, three, four, and now looking for a fifth wave in Burgundy to uh, subdivide into five black waves. It's at intermediate degree. It's a one, two, one, two, three, four, three, four, five. So um, all the subdivisions look good throughout the structure and looking for a fifth wave target in black or intermediate degree that is also normal. Why would it be normal? Because we already got an extended third wave here. So the, all of the price action up from late 2010 through um, oh, early 2018 was the third wave in black. And then this was either an expanded flat or an expanding triangle in some items. And we've been, uh, in my opinion, in a thrust, terminal thrust out of that triangle ever since March of 2020. And so um, if, if we measure the distance of one through three in black, take that times the most normal 0.618, add that to the bottom of black wave four, and we get a target of 43,652, uh, just a bit higher. So the down zones of industrial average, we have uh, three targets in really close succession up here between 41,000 and 43,600. And it's, it seems most likely that we'll hit the upper edge of that target zone and it hasn't hit it yet. And the challenge since Mar the um, end of Black Wave 4 in March of 2020 uh, has been how is this structure up from March of 2020 going to get to that target zone? It, it needs to get to that target zone in five waves. And so uh, for some period of time, I was expecting a uh, ending or contracting diagonal that would chop and overlap its way higher and maybe take uh, a bit longer to, um, to um, complete. So um, that was my initial idea off of the March of 2020 low. We get a one, two, three, overlap four, five up into that, that price range. Um, however, that really wasn't in the cards. And then when we bring uh, Hearst um, analysis into the picture, and we look at um, some, in this case, a 100 year long data set, nearly 100 years. So this, uh, I'm able to look at Hearst analysis starting in October of 1928. It's suggesting that somewhere in the middle of 2022, possibly the third quarter in, in some, some uh, stock market items, that we see a, a significant and major top in the stock market. So it, it appears that there's not gonna be enough time for an ending contracting diagonal. And what we're likely to get here is a standard five, um, um, five wave non-overlapping impulse to the upside. And the, the one thing that isn't standard about it is um, how long wave one was within that structure. So we, we got a, a extended wave one that's not normally the extended wave in a five wave structure in the stock market. It's usually wave three, but wave one, as you can see, moved up and, and all halfway to that target zone all by itself. So that was an extended wave one. Um, and so if this wave one was extended, then we wouldn't look for an extended wave three or an extended wave five. We've already seen extended waves there. And, um, wave one I've got, uh, was that long, many ticks long. And then wave three, I believe finished here. And notice that, uh, at least on this Simulog weekly chart, wave three was a little shorter than wave one was. So wave five cannot be longer than wave three if this was the wave three top. In my, and, and when I bring Hearst once again into the equation, Hearst um, is calling 
this low back in mid-June, an 18-month cycle trough on this item. Now, on, on many other items, it's calling this most recent dip an 18-month cycle trough. And so that 18-month cycle trough is due to occur about 18 months after the March of 2020 low, approximately. And a, exactly 18 months after that low would be September. So um, it, if the 18-month cycle had been perfect in every way, in, in the, the most average length of average length, then it would have occurred maybe about here. But now it's getting awfully late for that 18 month cycle trough to occur um, if it hasn't happened yet. And so it's very likely the 18 month cycle trough, the first 18 month cycle trough after a nine year cycle trough has already occurred in the stock markets. And therefore, in my opinion, this, the, is likely the end of wave three and then wave four likely ended in early december and we're in the fifth wave up so this would be the wave five of five of five of five up from the 1932 low and uh, the fibonacci target for the end of blue wave five or minor degree but that, that fits best with this uh these three longer term fibonacci targets that I've been explaining is where wave five blue will equal a 0 0.382 times the net traveled of one through three. That's a pretty um, a th good target in my opinion, in my opinion, considering that wave one was the uh, extended wave this time, wave three was shorter than wave one. So that target is up around about right about 44,000. Matter of fact, it is exactly at uh, 43,962. So I think this market is likely by the time we get to the middle of this year, uh, going to the top, this, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, around 44,000. So uh, that is a, a, an additional, just to put it in perspective, uh, twenty percent or so higher for the stock markets, at least uh, using the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and then on the daily chart we start getting into some of the shorter cycles and and um, and using the composite line on the uh, analysis to show where the next peaks and troughs um, are are going to be now on. On stock market items, I use troughs only on the, the Cindian Trader um, platform, which figures up the Hearst analysis. And I'll um, notice I am not, I, I'm using no repins going back 100 years on this analysis, and it really has been working well. And so I um, basically on the Dow, this is a daily chart. It's still bullish from uh, December 20 up through approximately January 22. And then um, expecting a pullback through early April and then that top in late May. And because this target zone up here is so close by, and notice I'm, I'm looking for the upper edge of the target zone. Um, I think that and because the top is expected in late May, I think we're going to get an overlapping ending contracting diagonal up into that high um, on, on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. <coughs> um, that way it, it will take, that really works well with these dates, the Hearst dates, and it works very well with the Fibonacci target up here on almost to 44,000. Um, that it would be choppy and overlapping in this final uh, wave five of five of five of five. So um, I've got a main and an alternate. They're both bullish. Um, my main count is that that low in on December one was the end of blue wave four. And so we're moving up in a blue wave five that will subdivide into five pink waves. And um, notice that the composite line is uh, suggesting that we're going to get a little pullback here 
from January 2 through January 10, and then going to move move on up. So from this blue wave four low, I think we've got a five wave up structure for wave A in green. This was wave B in green, and now we're going to get a wave C in green. It's going to end quite a bit higher, and the, and the reason I've got it quite a bit higher is I'm expecting this diagonal <clears throat> moving up through mid-year to be contracting. In other words, wave one would be the longest of one, three, or five. And then uh, wave two would be the longer of two or four. Wave four would overlap down into the price territory of wave one. And if <clears throat> this projection is correct, um, by the time we get up here to uh, the top target area, we get a little throw over up here in late May, approximately. That's the way things look right now. Uh, of course, these hertz constantly adjust a little bit to price action. And so the, these dates, I'm sure, will morph just slightly, uh, and, but only slightly, as long as this continues to be considered the 18-month cycle trough back here mid-June. Um, so there'd be a little throw over of that line connecting one and three, and it would give us an amazing signal that the market was um at finally the basically the secular bull market that started in 1932 was finally uh reaching its uh final up upside target zone or target area so there's the dow jones industrial average this week looking for a pullback down through uh jan 10 that Jan 10 is Monday of next week. So that is one week of corrective downward action. Uh, or now this wave two here could be any number of types of corrections. It, could, it might even give us an expanded flat that has a new high in it. It's, we just don't know how, what that pattern is going to be uh, ahead of time, or it could be a zigzag. Those are the most two most common uh, for a wave two would be an expanded flap or a um, or a zigzag down through Jan 10. So there's the Dow. And um, also I wanted that to be kind of an explanation for the new subscribers um, for how, how I derived those large degree Fibonacci targets up here why I think that the market isn't, isn't going to be done going up until it gets up into that area and my decision-making process on where to place the one in blue, two, three, and four, um, which is all related to Hearst psychoanalysis uh, and basically incorporating Hearst into the Elliott wave count and Fibonacci targets to, to come up with um, you know, a wave count that works perfectly well with the Hearst roadmap. Um, <clears throat> let's see. And uh, one other thing I will say is I know um, uh, Hearst, Hearst doesn't look at long, long-term Fibonacci targets, really. It doesn't, it doesn't bring those into consideration, but Elliott wave obviously does it's a very important part of Elliott Wave. And so um, you might hear Hearst um, people say, well, this is a nine year cycle trough. So we should see a lot more upward movement from March of 2020 than just you know, two years or slightly more than two years. It theoretically should go up for four and a half years. You know, it, it would be the midpoint of a nine year cycle. And um, my answer to that, someone that would say that, is um, that Hearst analysis via Cindy and Trader Software only figures up to 18-year cycles, whereas um, Elliott Wave, by looking back oh, 100 years plus, um, is looking at longer cycles than even that. And so um, I don't, just because Hearst would... Uh, say, well, theoretically, there would be four and a half years 
of upward movement from a nine-year cycle trough. I, I think that these long-term Fibonacci's as an Elliottitian are uh, going to take over and have this market topping earlier than probably Hearst um, uh, would, would uh, many Hearst types would, would assume based on that um, being a nine year cycle trough in March of 2020. Amazingly, Hearst, when you look at the composite line on a long term chart, it really does peak around mid year of this year and starts to work its way lower. Um, and the next large cycle trough is due until about August of 2024. So um, even though that's a nine year, the composite line quits going up about mid year and then works its way uh, quite a bit lower on through um, mid to late 2024 next, despite that, that potentially being a nine year cycle trough. So um, moving on forward and then uh, I keep a lot of auxiliary charts that I don't have time to cover in the web webinar, um, but you do get screenshots every night as a subscriber and at all plan levels of uh, a bunch of screenshots of my trend following template on daily chart. It lets you know what the trend direction currently is based on this template. And it's been up since December 7 on the Dow. There's some other things uh, that are indicated on that trend template, <clears throat> including extreme overbought, extreme oversold as <coughs> determined by the ADX indicator. So if the ADX indicator is above 60, then the trend, whatever direction it's going is overdone. And it's likely to have a larger pullback than normal um, once you reach above 60 on the ADX uh, indicator on daily chart. Also for premium plan members, um, I am going to be busy for the next 10 days re-optimizing uh, all of the algos to the latest three years running of data. I've already done the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And um, I think what you'll find as a general rule on uh, these new uh, re-optimized strategies uh, for automated momentum signals is that, um, uh, and you can see I'm, I'm taking in now all, all of the data in the back test is going to, it's going to start on January 1 of 2019. So it'll, it'll include all of 2019, all 2020 and all of 2021. And uh, what you're going to find is, and these are all the different parameters of the algo that I back test for. Um, <clears throat> and uh, what you're going to find is that um, the higher this market goes, the larger the stop that is required in order to stay in these trades. But um, this is a, a quick look at the algo on the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which is typically the best performing algo on most, uh, on average, on all the things we look at, winning percentage, the average winner size compared with the average loser size and all of those things. But and, and what we just, um, what I just got through uh, uh, re-optimizing the Dow and the S&P, the S&P is actually form of, uh, on the ES contracts actually performing a little better with a better winning percentage. But um, had you been trading this algo, had the settings on this algo been identically to the same as they are right now? And by the way, there's almost never in much of a change on the settings as I do the re-optimization. The change is usually on the size of the stop the initial size of the stop, but, but it, over three years, it would have taken a $10,000 account up to uh, $90,000. Uh, and, and you can see that this is a pretty good um, equity curve, a little weaker, a little bit this year. So we're going to look at the equity curve on the S&P in a minute and see how, how good it's been. The main difference here is the size of the stop has, had, has been increased in order to accommodate 
and I use a dollar size on the stop in, in order to accommodate a uh, little higher volatility and as well as the fact that uh, these items are continue to be priced higher and higher. And so uh, if a person doesn't want to use a $1,700 stop on one full size uh, YM contract, then you can always use these signals on the, the new micro e-mini. I say they're new. They've been around for a couple of years now, like the MYM contract. And so if you trade the MYN contract, every Dow point isn't worth $5. It's worth 50 cents. And all of these stats, you divide by 10. But you can see that we're just off of, um, we're still long uh, on the um, algo from December 23rd. So even though I did the reoptimization, the last buy signal came in identically the same spot and it's still in the trade. Just beware that I'm expecting a pullback this week. And as soon as the um, Walter Bressert and the, the adapt and it's moving average here, 10 day moving average. And by the way, we back test for that as well. It's not always 10 days. It's other sometimes. As soon as those cross over, it's going to exit this trade and i'm because uh i think we're going to see a continued pullback from the this week um i think i'm hoping this stays up enough to close in profit doesn't drop too fast and they, that it can uh, but upon that crossover it's going to say get out exit you can see that the, the stop if it moved all the way down to the stop it would it would be a losing trade so these green boxes here, that's a winner. Uh, this, these red boxes here, these are losers. So, um, and this is the way um, momentum algos work. In a trend, it has a tendency to, to see winning trades. In a choppy correction, it's, it has a tendency to give back a little bit on trades. But if you'll notice on this chart, the average size of the green winning boxes that represent winning trades is substantially larger than the average size of the red box. And the reason is because there's a maximum loss because we use a stop loss. So it can only lose a certain amount on a trade, but the because it stays long until we get the Walter Brissard signal, the, the, especially on, uh, in an uptrend, it has an open objective and therefore you can see some big, big winners. And that's why the average winner on this algo is $3,833 trading one contract at a time, whereas the average loser is $1,547. So <clears throat> the average winner is well over twice as big as the average loser. And even though you have a winning percentage slightly above 50%, it is that difference between the average size of the winner and the average size of the loser that brings in the big bucks. And that's pretty much the same on all my algos. So that's the way the um, premium plan nightly algo report and signals uh, works. Also premium plan members see a sentiment conditions um, template I'm going to be working with uh, William on some improvements on, on this, uh, um, on these indicators uh, this year, and that, that might be able to show some different uh, ways to look at sentiment and what we've been looking at for the last few years. Um, this shows commercials positioning versus retail positioning down here. Um, and, um, we're going to try to really do a deep dive into some of the settings on these and see if we can get the, these sentiment conditions, screenshots, the premium plan members see every night, uh, to dial those in and, and make them more predictive.